So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Seminar 7 in our Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan Review Seminar Series. These seminars are built to help you inform um, people on the different bits of the water quality story that contribute towards the review of the Water Quality Improvement Plan. Hopefully you're finding them informative. Today's session, we're going to uh, be looking at how we track progress towards water quality, but also other objectives that are celebrated by our region. So we have two amazing speakers today. Carl Mitchell will be talking about the Paddock to Reef program and the water quality report card. And then Rachel Darcy is going to be talking about the regional report card partnerships and the amazing work that through those partnerships gives us a really good insight into um, the the outcomes and the objectives in those those regions. So before I pass to Carl, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands where we are all meeting today. For me, it's the Yagara and Turbo peoples. Um, I would like to pay my respects to elders past and present, and I'd like to extend that acknowledgement to the reef traditional owners, both on land and sea country sites, uh, remembering that really important connection between land, sea and sky country and how um, that connection needs to be protected and enhanced and that being one of the you know the the drivers for this review um i will pass on to carl thank you maria and uh welcome everyone to se seminar seven in the series for the water quality improvement plan review um, today I'm going to be talking, as Maria said, about the Paddock to Reef Integrated Monitoring, Modelling and Reporting Program and the um, Reef Water Quality Report Card um, that we produce as a result of the outcomes of that program. So this is Series 7, num Seminar Series number 7, and you probably have been um, introduced to this concept that we have a range of planning instruments for the management of the Great Barrier Reef that have a high-level long-term so 20, 2050 long-term sustainability plan, which covers multiple areas of reef management across climate change and coastal land use, traditional owner use, uh, direct use of a marine park, all of the issues that impact the Great Barrier Reef. And then sitting under that nested is the um, Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan, which looks at the, the land-based elements and the water quality impacts to the Great Barrier Reef and how we can improve the health of the inshore areas of the Great Barrier Reef by managing nutrients, fine sediments and pesticides. So that Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan uses a program logic approach to look at um, what needs to be done in order to support the higher level value that wood, good water quality sustains the outstanding universal value of the Great Barrier Reef and builds resilience, improves the ecosystem health and benefits communities. So um, the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan lays out a range of actions from community engagement through to land management, through to water quality improvement, to ecosystem improvement to um, protect the Great Barrier Reef. Um, the Paddock to Reef program is then the program that supports and monitors, evaluates how useful those activities identified in the Reef Water Quality Improvement Plan are. So the Paddock to Reef program reports progress against the targets, objective and outcome within the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan. It's collaborative. Um, we work together with the Australian and Queensland government. Um, we have research groups, um, industry and regional natural resource management organisations involved in the program. It's based on the principles of adaptive management and continuous improvement. So uh, in implementing the program, we um, we save up all of our methodological changes and technical changes in our monitoring over a five-year period um, and implement them at all once. So we have this, this process of um, 
every five years updating the methodologies and the science and all of the inputs into the program. Uh, and we're about to go through a major review over the next 18 months. Um, the program provides information back to our partners to evaluate, prioritise and continuously improve um, actions, activities to support the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan. Um, one of the key focuses of the Paddock to Reef program is the integration of monitoring and modelling. Um, both are critical to understanding how best to manage the water quality impacts on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and by integrating monitoring and modelling, we also are able to run scenarios and better understand what um, potential impacts any future investment or future changes might have. Um, the last um, key element of the program we've got there is the um, integration between science and management. So the Paddy to Reef program is constantly producing um, new information and improved science, improved understanding of reef management back to managers so that they can um, make better decisions about where projects go and what sort of effectiveness they can improve, they can achieve from implementing projects. Um, so we have this really good relationship back with people on the ground and with policymakers um, trying to get them the best information to improve water quality for the Great Barrier Reef. So this is the overview of the program. Um, as the name implies, we have elements of monitoring, modelling and reporting from the paddock through the catchment and into the marine environment. And there are 10 key theme thematic areas that deliver information into the Paddock to Reef Integrated Monitoring, Modelling and Reporting Program. Starting at the top end in the paddock side of things, we have our agricultural management uh, adoption team, uh, agricultural management practices adoption team, and they're out there having um, undertaking uh, work to look at what the um, current state of management is across the key industries in the Great Barrier Reef across all of the catchments, and that's the team within the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Um, and so they they then work with our agriculture, our monitoring, our paddock monitoring and modelling teams who are running trials in the catchments, looking at what different what those different practices, what impacts they're having on water quality to the stream. I and mean, then the modelers are extrapolating those experimental studies uh, along with other information to the whole of the reef. Then we move into the catchment side of things and we have the catchment loads monitoring program out of the science division within Department of Environment, Science and Environment. Um, they are undertaking end of catchment load monitoring um, across the bulk of the rivers that um, run into the Great Barrier Reef as well as some sub catchment sites. Um, there's pesticide monitoring as well as um, all species of nutrients um, and sediment, fine sediment monitoring across the whole of the GBR catchment. The catchment modelers um, use that information to uh, calibrate and validate their models, which are taking the outputs of both the agricultural models and the agricultural um, management practice adoption work to have a look to run modelling scenarios for what levels of improvement we can expect to see um, from any reported change in practice at the end of the catchment. And so that's the, the data we then use to report against the water quality targets that are in the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan. We have a range of catchment um, indicators being reported through remote sensing and through direct monitoring. That's our riparian extent, wetland condition, wetland extent and ground cover programs. We have a human dimension or program as well that are looking at stewardship and um, the barriers to adoption for people as well as people va people's values um, as far as practices and implementing new practices. And then in the marine environment, we have uh, seagrass monitoring, water quality monitoring and coral monitoring that fit underneath the marine monitoring program that's rolled out by the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. And we have marine modelling um, with the ERIS team out of the CSIRO. So as you can see, it's a very comprehensive program. We've got monitoring and modelling from everything from human perceptions of management practice right through to coral and seagrass health. 
reported number of scales. So we've record, we've got Great Barrier Reef wide reporting. Um, we've got the six natural resource management regions, um, the 35 catchments, and then for the larger catchments, the Fitzroy and the Burdick, and we break them up into we further break them up into smaller management units. Um, so that's our reporting scales. And we'll see that when we go through the Reef Water Quality Report Card shortly. So the Reef Water Quality Report Cards, it's an interactive report card. Um, it's online and you can actually drill down and get a finer and finer detail and, and get more and more information out of our data by interacting with the report card. Uh, it's has been in the past released annually. The current one is a two-year report card. We've um, been undertaking a review and model rebuild, and it takes us 18 months to crunch all the data and produce all the reports for the report card. So, but this current one was released in May, and it's a um, it's a two-year report card. We're going to go through a bit of a walkthrough of the report card in a minute. Um, the key features of the report card is that it's a report card. It has um, a five-point scoring system, A, B, C, D, and E, like you might have um, got back in school, and it gives you a, a feel for progress against the reef water quality targets. Um, and that's a key differentiation between the reef water quality report card and other report cards. You'll see the regional report cards shortly. They're relating the condition of the catchments, whereas we are... Um, particularly in water quality and in water quality improvement reporting against targets, uh, also in the, in the catchments. In the marine environment, we also report conditions similar to the regional report cards. Okay, so here it is, and I'm gonna now jump out into the website. So when you first jump onto the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan website, you'll get to this landing page, which gives an overview of the um, reporting for the 21 and 22 period, as well as um, a bit of background for the um, climatic context um, and the results for the program, the investment for the period, um, and then some of the outcomes, we've got a, um, a bit of an infographic here on some of the key results, and I've got that in a slide further on that I can go through. And some of the key highlights are linked further down on the main page. Um, and we also have the reporting against our human dimensions, um, telling the human story behind practice change. And so that's some of the perspectives of different growers, um, so all of that information is there on the front page, as well as the frequently asked questions. And then if you need want to get into further information about how we score, how we generate our grades, um, all of the methods are summarised um, and available. Uh, and then we also link back to the Reef 2050 Water Quality Improvement Plan, which of course all of the information on here is um, reporting against the objectives targets for that. So then if you want to have a look then in more detail around our individual results, the 20, 25 catchment targets results, you can navigate either through the drop down menus here and go into each one of the catchments. You can refined based on the parameter that you're interested in. And you can also navigate via the map on the left-hand side. Um, we also have these summaries here about each one of the catchments, so you can get a snapshot of land uses and some of the main um, characteristics of each one of the catchments. So here you can see the Great Barrier Reef wide results for dissolved inorganic nitrogen for 2021-22. Um, the target is in the grey box at the top, so this tells us what we're shooting for. Um, 
overall progress is in this circle here, um, which says that we're about halfway towards the 2025 target. And we've also got the year by year results and the trajectory line and the grade for this two year period. So each one of the pages, you'll see these types of results and we can scroll through those for the different parameters. Um, and also we can go down in scale to regions and attachments. So there's a wealth of information in the report card on those water quality results, um, and you can spend time at your leisure going through and, and um, if you're looking for more information on each one, it's here on our info tab, and we can point you then also to our technical documents on our website. So moving off from the water quality results and into the, um, the wetland and catchment condition results, and see we have these report card coasters for marine condition and then you can get more detail on that look at the trends over time and the breakdown of those results as well as the summary um, for the conditions of the year and the results for that year for the marine environment we also have that in the wetlands for both the state and the pressure of wetlands across the great barrier reef um, and then we have the ground cover results as well over here in the targets. Just want to show you with the ground cover results, we have these really great maps of the uh, ground cover for each of the periods. And they can give you a pretty good snapshot of what the condition of ground cover was at that time. So please have a look at our, um, our report card. There's a wealth of information there that's frequently asked questions and lots of information that you can go to for further um, clarification if you've got any questions. Um, but I'll just show a quick summary of some of the results from this latest report card. Uh, we saw very good progress of in pesticides in the Murray catchment. Um, we've had moderate condition in the inshore marine environment. Uh, the progress towards those water quality targets over the two year period um, for dissolved and organic nitrogen has been assessed as very poor. Uh, for fine sediment, the two year progress was assessed as poor for the whole Great Barrier Reef. Um, very good for particulate phosphorus and um, moderate for particulate nitrate. Um, the largest improvement we saw were in the um, Endeavour and Murray catchments in fine sediment and a burdekin for dissolved organic nitrogen. So the summary, um, as you can see, we've got a, a spectrum of colours there, so, so variable um, progress towards those targets for the water quality, um, different water quality parameters across the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so some good news stories and some not so good news stories as far as our progress for that two year period. So the Reef Water Quality Report Card is um, one of multiple report cards on the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, and we have a five yearly outlook reporting from the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and the outlook report is expected out shortly. Um, we have the Reef Water Quality Report Card, um, which came out in May, and then there's regional report cards produced by five of the reef regions um, involved in undertaking assessment analysis of their condition of their catchments. And so I'm going to hand over now to Rachel Darcy from the Office of the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage and our Reef Partnerships and Innovation team, and Rachel's going to take you through some of the um, reef report cards. Thanks, Carl, for that. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I'm, um, as Carl said, from Office of Great Barrier Reef and World Heritage. So um, Queensland Government in, is a major funder into these regional report card partnerships who develop the report cards. 
but I must acknowledge the five regional um, partnerships. They um, have a, a great set of um, staff. There's about 18 staff across the regions um, who are who are executive officers and tech and project officers um, for the partnerships. And it is they who develop the um, these report cards um, with input from um, all the partners, which include Queensland government, Australian government, uh, local government, industry, and a whole bunch of people. So I've just got. Um, the front covers of the most recent report cards. So we've got the Mackaywit Sunday one, the Townsville, the Gladstone, and uh, next, uh, the Fitzroy. Oh Lord! And we had a little issue with the Wet Tropics one front page, and I think we accidentally deleted that. So my sincere apologies to the Wet Tropics for that beautiful front cover. It was there 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Um, so the regional report card partnerships bring together partners who have a shared vision for healthy uh, waterways in their regions to report on the condition of the waterways. Um, so the partners, as well as um, the range of government and local communities, it also includes traditional owners, industry, farmers, scientists, tourist operators, conservation groups and others. They uh, are all very individual and they accommodate issues that are relevant to their region. Um, they have um, slightly different indicators and data sources. They are very much community and partners Part, driven by their partners as to what the um, report card will cover. They provide a finer scale, regionally relevant assessment of the health of all the waterways in their region. And they're not just about environmental health. They um, assess the status of ecological, environmental, social, economic and cultural values of a particular region. Um, they are independent of government. Um, uh, so um, they provide a balanced um, source of information. Uh, they highlight environmental pressures that are best dealt with by uh, local government and catchment management groups and local partners in their region. They are different to the uh, reef report card in that they mostly rely on data from outside sources to inform the health to inform their report cards. Some of the partnerships do um, um, create and um, source their own um, data, but most of them are what we call data scavengers, getting data from where they can um, and validating it through their technical working groups and independent science groups. Okay, so um, as, as mentioned, they cover more than just waterway health indicators. They uh, have a focus on healthy land and waterways. They cover climate data, land use, biodiversity, pesticides, fish health and wetlands. They also look uh, cover healthy marine ecosystem data. We have data on coral and seagrass health and water weight and water quality. And uh, with a focus on healthy communities, there's cultural heritage, human dimensions and urban water management data included in their report cards. Uh, because they uh, contain a lot of data, and um, because it's a bit hard sometimes to understand what the difference is between the regional report cards and the reef report card, um, we have developed a report card explainer um, to describe the difference. And uh, this is available um, online and the linkage is at, the links, sorry, are at the end of this presentation. So I know that's a lot of information to see on your screen, but, um, up the top left, the um, text in, in black is showing the reef report card uh, and the indicators that they cover. And then we have the five regional report cards from the wet tropics, the dry tropics, Mackay with Sundays, Fitzroy and Gladstone. And the little icons are showing the range of indicators that are covered in each area. And then there's an icon legend that the bottom, which talks about um, breaks it into um, stewardship management, practice and adoption, um, human dimensions, uh, catchment estuarine and uh, marine condition, water condition, biodiversity, habitat, and so forth. So, um, and then we have uh, circles um, of either a complete circle, which shows that the data is coming from the Peg Tarif team or 
um, a dotted circle showing another data source, for example, um, coming from Ames, but there are also various other data sources. This is capturing um, um, the vast majority of the data, but not all of it. So if you're interested, I suggest, I encourage you to go online to have a, um, a better look at that, at that page. Um, so I've just picked an example out of the um, uh, Mackaywit Sunday um, regions report, Mackaywit Sunday Isaac report card um, to show that um, an example from the Don Basin in the Whitsunday coast of uh, a coaster that's included in their regional report card for the Don Basin freshwater and how um, whilst there might be a B overall, that data, that B score is made up of data from covering fish health, water quality, habitat and hydrology. And then in the outer circle, you will see the, um, the different um, elements that go into uh, creating that, um, that um, score. So for water quality, there's sediments, nutrients and pesticides. And so the scoring um, is consistent with um, uh, what Carl mentioned before with uh, five grades from A to E. And we also have um, a, a gray score when we have no data for that region. Um, and so this page, um, this also gives a bit of information from the report card to show where their data comes from and what goes into their grade. And just showing um, there's a QR code in, in, in this report card. So there's places that you can um, go into the um, websites for the different report cards and drill into the technical report or to drill in for more detail about uh, the data. Uh, so while we're talking about Mackay with Sunday Isaac, I'm just I'm not going to the different websites for the um, report cards, but just giving a snapshot uh, from the different from some of the report cards. So this is from the latest Mackay with Sundays Isaac report card, and um, you can see the um, the grades across the region uh, are mostly Bs and Cs, so pretty good. Um, and obviously go into the report card to look at more detail. And just we are also showing um, on the uh, bottom right there uh, the icons of the um, partners in that region. And so that partnership has, I think, about 30 plus um, partners um, who, you know, contribute contribute a lot of information but also contribute data and and funding and um, management advice and 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 their time uh, this is um a snapshot uh, an overview of the wet tropics partnerships um latest report card and their waterway grades uh, so the wet tropics partnership uh is covering nine catchments and eight estuaries and um, as you can, as you might be able to see from that, it's got it covers a a, a big amount of coastline from the Daintree um, in the north, which is shown on the right of the screen, down to below Hinchin Brook, and uh, grades there are ranging from Bs and Cs. Uh, a snapshot from the uh, Healthy Waters. Partnership for the Dry Tropics, which is based around the Townsville region. It's a it's a bit different to some of the other partnerships in that it is um, uh, focused on the Townsville region and so has a very urban focus. It's um, um, as opposed to some of the other um, regional report cards, which have um, a, a big amount of uh, um, agricultural land. Um, and so a snapshot from the Townsville um, report card uh, show, shows a lot of uh, Bs and Cs. It's a younger partnership, uh, hasn't been uh, going as long as some of the other partnerships. And so um, it is still developing up its data sources. And so it's um, coasters um, and, and not as do not cover quite the um, extent of data that some of the other report cards do. 
Um, for the Fitzroy partnership, it covers the biggest catchment area in um, the reef regions. Um, and it is the partnership that has been um, going for the longest. Um, and so this, instead of showing, oh, this page is showing um, a snapshot of the history of the partnership from when it was, uh, there was community concern about the um, wanting information about the health of the waterway back in 2008. And then the, um, the, the partnership was actually established in 2012 with their first pilot report card in 2013. So um, last year they celebrated uh, 10 years of reporting. And this partnership has um, um, developed with its data to, um, to be able to release report cards um, only a few months after the data year that they're um, covering. So um, this year they will be releasing their report card for last for the financial year of 23-24. Uh, so up and with data up until June of this year, and they will re be reporting releasing that in October this year. So that's uh, an amazing effort to um, have such close um, close time to their reporting. Uh, a snapshot of the Fitzroy partnerships um, grades show lots of um, Bs and Cs um, for their region as well. The Gladstone report card um, is focused on the Gladstone Harbour. Um, this snapshot shows the coasters covering the environmental grades for the um, harbour zones. Um, a mixture of A's and B's and C's and a few D's. The, um, all as as I think I mentioned before, that with the partnerships all being independent and very much individual, they do cover different um, indicators. So the Gladstone um, partnership has quite a strong focus on fish health and crab mud crab health, and so they have indicators. Um, for that, that cover fish health and fish recruitment and mud crabs, um, and that goes into their env environmental grades. But they also um, have report on economic, cultural, and uh, social health of the harbour. Um, and now I'll just check that I've covered all. So I wanted to also say that um, with the um, the report cards, like when they launch their, when the partnerships launch their report cards, it's quite an exciting event in the communities and um, uh, the partnerships all make a great effort to, um, you know, have have interesting and fun launches and um, have the community involved and um, generate lots of media and um, celebrate the um, achievements of the partners and the partnerships over the year. They, as well as um, releasing report cards, they also uh, release um, stewardship or management response reports or um, magazines about, the, um, about their local region and um, the work that the partners are, are doing in their region. So um, a big shout out to the um, work of the partnerships and um, you know, in, in producing um, such an amazing amount of information for the community. Okay. Back to Maria, I think. <laughs> thanks, Rachel. And thanks, Carl, for that really good overview of the, the different layers of reporting. Um, I think, you know, when we contextualize that within our water quality improvement plan review and the conversations that we've been having around. Um, I think partnerships is something that has come up in almost all seminars around making the magic happen. Partnerships is really key and you see the range of partnerships in those regional report cards is amazing. Um, something else we've spoken about is scale, the scale of planning and reporting. And I think those those regional report cards really give us an insight into what happens um, from a 
planning and reporting from a community-led partnership approach and the magic that can happen there. So I think that was really great, Rachel. Emma's going to pop in all the links in the chat now so that um, I've, we're hoping you can copy and paste them across and then dive deep into those report cards at your leisure. Um, I'll ask Emma to stop recording now, please, and we'll jump into the questions and answers time. <laughs> 